Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Monday morning trading room. Hold on one second here. I'll get you my monitor. The market's just opened up. And, uh, well, we're kind of looking at a, a little bit of a seesaw in the market, really. You can see this is where prices left off at the end of last week. And mm, it's kind of an active overnight session, not really. And then uh, the market rallied up, came back down, and we're pretty much taking over exactly from where we left off last week. So nothing really in terms of opening gaps or whatnot. I saw an interesting movie over the weekend, uh, The Big Short. Uh, no doubt many of you will have heard about this one already. It's the uh, one that has to do with the uh, with the whole default mortgage swap scenario in the U.S. and I'm sure everybody's pretty sick and tired about hearing about it. What made this movie different was um, it went into a few of the people who actually saw it coming, a few of the outsiders, if you will, and what they did to, uh, to try to take advantage of what they saw in that situation. And these were just the private investors, not, uh, not the banks and such that were structuring the mortgage bonds but unfortunately the movie was a little bit technical i had to pause it every 20 minutes or so and explain what was going on <laughs> but it was um what really struck home what they did a really good job with was how manipulated the markets were and it just made me think of our own trading and uh, the NASDAQ's a pretty tough market to manipulate, but even so, um, you know, it, it's possible that this type of thing really does happen, so we shouldn't be naive to it, that there's big players involved kind of stacking the odds in their favor. Speaking of stacking odds in your favor, here's the first micro macro cross signal. And I know it's very early. That we're kind of testing the waters here, looking to see whether or not they're going to try to head higher so the market opening right about here around 43.92 and I don't know if they're going to try to put in a rally today or not it's hard to tell obviously they need to get above the high and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to let this one run out I'm just going to let that one if it goes, it goes. If it doesn't, well, it doesn't. Nice little um, soft edge buy here as well on the Raptor. So we've got a couple of signals suggesting that maybe, maybe the market is going to try to move higher today. Or maybe not. little bit of a retreat here they may be trying to put in a more solid basing pattern before they actually rally that's why I've placed my stop way down here if I if, if I put my stop you know say just below this little swing well we wouldn't have any staying power at all uh, al alternatively I could place my stop say below the macro line or even below this little swing right here gives me a little bit more holding power but not very much let's take a look at the support and resistance lines and see where a probable target would be so 4404 is our primary resistance Well, that would be, uh, yeah, that would put us back here where this little overnight swing was. Uh, 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw in an order here at 44.04 for a profit objective. I said I was going to let it run out, didn't I? But maybe we'll just grab some of that. Or you know what I'll do? If it hits 44.04, we'll just, we should have our stop to break even by then. There's no doubt we're going to see a, some reaction as the market gets up to that 4404 area, if in fact it gets up to that 4404 area. Come on, get up there. So you notice we've got a few bars with these tails on them. That's suggestive of the sellers trying to sell the market down and the buyers coming back and pushing the market higher. So if we can get this bar to close favorably, then I think we can start to do something with our stop loss orders. There we go, there we go, and I'm going to take this trade to break even now. All right, so here we go, we're at that first profit objective, so we would have banked, oh, about 80, maybe $90 in profit, which is pretty good for a scalp trade, you know, you should never ignore that. We can ride out this swing, which we probably, well, it all depends how deep they're going to try to pull back. So here comes the reaction now to the 4404 line. Next stop, 4411, 4412, if we manage to get through there. So we need a real quick little reaction here if um, the smart money is to bail out and look to re-enter. Yeah, here they come. They're going to tap us here at break even in a second. So the market may not be quite as bullish as I thought it might be. Working on a Pardon me, a first micro macro cross signal here in crude oil also. I would probably suggest taking it above the high. You know, looking for that second second thrust, that second push. Crude oil, unfortunately, we have to cover relatively tight. Oh, actually, I might be able to sneak a slightly wider stop on that one. So here too, it's a first micro macro cross signal. It is looking a little bit more bullish. Now they're going to tap us here in just a second as they try to retreat back into that hard edge. The hard edge here on the Eagle and the hard edge here on the Raptor. A little bit quiet for a Monday morning. Okay, our oil trade.
trade now active. We've already hit the break even trigger and it looks like we got a little bit of a positive slip on that. So oil trying hard to get to our profit target and it's almost there. So hooray for us, we hit our profit objective on our oil trade. That might have been one to try to run out as well. Oil, of course, um, more likely to you know, actually go somewhere. Uh, if it's going to make a huge range, that's certainly a possibility in the, in the uh, crude oil market. Good morning, Suncom. Suncom's asking, when will you do another profit run? Um, or will you do another profit run? There's not one in the books. Um, Adam and I, actually, we haven't discussed one for a long time. The profit run, for those of you who don't know, are, uh, we take about two months, and I try to run up uh, the account the best I can and fortunately we've done three of them and all three have turned out to be profitable I tell you it's uh, it's very nerve-wracking on my end <laughs> there's not a whole lot of talking or explain explanation going on when I'm doing the the profit run I'm just focused totally on trading Uh, crude oil still trying to press higher and doing a pretty good job of it. Here's crude oil now on the Eagle. You can say the trade forecaster says we're in trend mode for 171 minutes. We'll see how that actually plays out, but it's a good start. We've got the trend change. Uh, technically, well, no, I was going to say this is a rule of three type scenario, but it's not really. We had a teeny tiny retest of the lows right here. It would be hard to get overly bullish given this as your bottom. Uh, we might have caught a bit of a lucky break. We're not out of the woods yet, but it looks as though the buyers really started to pile on here at this whole 4,400 area. They defended it very well. Get up there. Come on, get up there. So here we are again. You got a second chance to grab that hundred dollars profit. Oh baby. We need to see there we go. I was gonna say we need to see a break of this high. Then we're gonna start to tag some of the sellers that were here and now you're seeing them exit see how the prices jumped up in a hurry there that's all the sellers bailing out of their positions I'm switching now to parabolics which are a little bit more uh, aggressive on the stop side uh, don't know if we're gonna ride out this swing That's all right, though. It was, a, it was a good little move. Nice little hop up. Did you see how the sellers or how the market accelerated there when we took out this high? So whenever you see a market that is really struggling, 
you know, it hits a resistance point, it comes down, makes this little swing, and then it comes up, and it must have been paused here at this whole 4450 area for, oh, I don't know, well, what did it seem like, uh, a minute at least, two, maybe three, it was really, you know, fighting to get through here, and then all of a sudden it popped, it hit 4405, and then we saw the market jump up. That's because we were trapping these sellers out of their positions. The what you would refer to as weak sellers, the guys that have their stop losses just above the market, the guys that are selling here on limit orders. So whenever you have an opportunity to trap traders, then you'll usually see the market make a relatively quick move. And how do you know where to trap traders? Well, the it's no mystery here. Let's take a look. Um, there's obvious selling here on the highs. There's obvious buying down here and down here. Look at what happened when this buying level let go. This little buying level, it didn't hold. Boom, down she goes. This wasn't because of active selling on the part of the sellers. This was all the exit orders, which would have been sell stops for the buyers down here. Then the market comes up, hits this little resistance area, and it goes up. Or the sellers try to fight it down, and then it breaks and it goes up. The nice thing about day trading versus end of day trading is you can actually watch how the bars unfold. You can see when there is a struggle between the buyers and the sellers. All right, looks like we might end up getting a cloud crossover signal here. Maybe. Getting a little bit of a trend change signal here. Oh, sorry, the trend change signal was back here on the Falcon. This is a, uh, a basic trend line touch, and I'm a little bit late on it now.
Uh, good morning, Jim. Jim says, uh, the advanced decline numbers this morning, 1,400 on the buy, just under 1,300 on the sell. So a relatively balanced market as they uh, press a little bit higher here. Yeah, I think so too. Jim says it's a mixed market. He says the uh, bank and the transports are weak, but the Russell and the oil are <laughs> strong. Uh, what I'm waiting for is I'm just waiting for the market to really show me its limit. You can see we did get up here to hit the other uh, support and resistance line, 44.11 three quarters. And now we're kind of, you know, in this neighborhood again here where we were with the overnights. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to wait things out. Sometimes you just have to wait for a decent signal. You can't manufacture a signal as far as a trade goes. So if we get a little bit of a pullback here into the hard edge, that could be make for an interesting opportunity.
And we're just kind of drifting here at the moment. Hmm. Well, yeah, nothing's happening anywhere, really. We've got nothing really going on in gold, nothing going on in crude. Yeah, I like watching the paint dry. You're right, uh, Jim. Okay, well, had an, had an attempt here to move the market higher, right here, that's failing, 
and now we're into a macro pullback situation, I would maybe consider a buy, but certainly not until we get above the high here, which pretty much means we're giving up our entire profit objective before even gaining entry. Something that you don't see me do very often or recommend very often is you could actually short the failure of this. You can actually look to short the failure of the macro pullback signal. Yeah, Jim says everything's fading except oil, and even oil is uh, hardly falling. It's retracing a little bit, but... Nothing really. All right, so here we go. Here's a little bit of a retracement. We're coming back into the hard edge.
Uh, thank goodness David's asking a question. <laughs> David asks, uh, Eric, how reliable is that signal that you're showing us right now? Now, if you're referring to the macro, the failure of the macro pullback signal, I would not go out of my way looking for this particular signal. The reason being, very often the macro pullback signal just needs a little bit of time to adjust and it's always better, in my opinion, to look for a with trend signal than a counter trend signal. Now this one worked out and you had a little clue that it would because of the double top that you got here, right? So the market made a couple attempts to head higher, it failed, it's very likely to try to find some support. So this one, you know, not that bad. Uh, this one here, when you're looking at it, um, you would have every reason to believe that the market should continue with trend. If you chose to buy the failure of it, it actually worked out as well. So you have a couple of instances here where the macro signals have been failing. And I think they've been failing because the market doesn't really have much direction to it. However, if you go back here to when the market is trending a little bit stronger or, you know, the structure is a little bit better, if you keep setting up for the failure of the macro pullback, you're going to end up finding yourself left out of several very good signals. All right? As the market continues with trend, you're left on the sidelines. So I would not go out of my way to look for that counter trend signal. Now, if you're talking about the uh, hard edge signal coming now into the hard edge, that tends to be a much more reliable signal, especially here uh, on the Raptor. Um, we've seen the market move up, it's come down, it's hit the hard edge. We're anticipating some sort of reaction. So far on the day, we're still fairly bullish. Well, maybe slightly bullish. They took a long time to get up here. And what I would be looking for at this point is a retest of the highs. Not necessarily a resumption of the highs, but somewhere through here, you would think that the buyers have to try to recover the market. Oh, man, and the way they're unfolding now, they're not going to give us a chance to get in. See that? Now, this is very rare. You shouldn't panic about this. Um, this is more of an anomaly. It happens, I don't know, a couple times a month where the market conditions are such that prices will start to move and uh, you're not going to generate a signal. You can see we were trying to generate a first micro macro cross signal here. We were trying to generate a trend change signal here. Uh, it didn't happen. Now, what do you do when you have a runaway market? Well, there's really only two things you can do. You can either watch it, go buy, or you can just shoot in a sell, um, hit the sell market button and try to, you know, catch some of that move. Now, just to pop in a trade arbitrarily is always a tough call, right? It does appear as though the market does have some downside momentum to it now and that's what we're looking at we're looking at trying to take advantage of momentum but there's absolutely zero structure here so of course the big question now is well where do I run my stop-loss order well it's all arbitrary at this point let's get a stop in play See, ideally the stop should be up here. That's the best place for the stop. And dollar-wise, yeah, that's within my reach. Yeah, it's always t 
tough to watch the market just slide by, but that's what I usually do. I just will let it wa watch it slide by. Why? Well, because you're going to get another chance at it. Right? See, here we're getting a, a first micro macro cross signal now. Now, I fully anticipate this signal is going to end up retreating a little bit and perhaps even getting into this macro line, which will probably see the market retreat to. Oh, 4,400 at least, maybe 4,402 by the time prices move up. But we've more or less retraced to where the day began, I believe. Let's take a look at our open. Yeah, see our opening price was here 43 or our low of the morning was 4391. So now we have a macro pullback signal, or pardon me, the uh, first micro macro cross signal here on the lows. For the extra tick or two, I'd probably take it below the lowest low. Uh, this is going to be a tough one because we've got to cover the trade back here to around 44.04. Uh, primary support here around 43.90 and after that next line uh, 43.82 with of course this substantial low at 43.85 Okay, so we're engaged now on the first micro macro cross signal and is it low enough to hit our profit objective? Not yet. It's getting there. It's trying. No, it is going to try to probably get into a macro pullback type scenario. Yeah, I know Jim says oil did the same thing on the Raptor. No sell signal, but a nice retrace of 35 cents. I know it's annoying when it happens. Fortunately, it does not happen all that often. All right, I'm going to bring my stops in here quite a bit. Come on, get down there. I'm afraid that they're going to try to pull back here a little. So I'm actually going to only give them above this little swing high. Okay, so you see now the seller is trying to sell the market. You see how they push the market down there, at least temporarily. We've still got a ways to go. If this bar finishes low, then there's a decent chance we're going to see a run at the lows and maybe a breakout lower. If, of course, they fail at the highs, 
well then the the trade is pretty much done for us and the buyers will will come in once again at the support level which is near the lows near this morning's lows see in fact I bet if I shot a trend line across here see that that's exactly where they put on the brakes like they got up there and uh, just tapped me so closed out that position for a, a small loss might end up getting a four arrow consolidation here yet or a proper signal that we can build off of Gold pressing a little bit higher, so we'll see. Um, we'll see whether or not that actually puts pressure on the stock market to send it lower. Yeah, it could be. Jim says uh, the market's been strong for a while, so a day of rest is possible. It's very unusual for a Monday to see the market this quiet. Or at least a Monday morning. We could maybe see a little bit more activity in the afternoon. That's always possible. I'm wondering whether or not we're going to get a red bar buy signal off of the eagle here. Now technically the band has just turned bullish but just barely. It may turn out to be this type of scenario where technically the band has crossed over but sometimes you can't look at these things um, you know with a magnifying glass. You have to step back and kind of take the overall view and right now the overall view is saying to me well the buyers are honoring this trend line and even though the follow-through is is a little bit less you know each time up are we going to see another buying attempt here And I think we might. Yeah, Jim says the Geiger counter is in buy mode. It is pulling over and, and holding. Oh, the sellers are starting to fight it back a little bit. Um, if we get a soft edge buy here, I might give it a go. This would kind of coincide with the signal that we're looking for on the Eagle. right now the only real good signal we had was on the on the hawk right out of the out of the gate
possible four arrow consolidation here in the uh, in the hawk that we're looking at. So that still remains bearish. All right, so let's see now whether the Raptor is going to give us that soft edge buy signal. The soft edge buy is always preceded by this little itty bitty test of the extreme. It's always a quick one. to get a handle on the market that's just drifting a little bit. No real commitment higher or lower, just putting in a range. might be a good time to go get a coffee. I don't think we're missing a whole lot. I do anticipate a little bit of a perhaps a run up. If you're looking at this four arrow consolidation pattern, I know it's a very strong pattern. Um, I think I would be inclined to well, that might work. I was going to say I, I would be inclined to draw a trend line and try to enter on the other side of the trend line. But that's going to mess things up a little bit. So it's one of these scenarios where we've got the signal. If you're going to take it, well, we could always dial down our risk or just throw a onesie in it. Um, you know, you're just going to have to prepare to risk the $100, $125 if this market chooses to bring you in and then reverse go the other way. All right, I'm going to be back in just a moment, and we'll see what the market gives us then.
Okay, I'm back. Notice how our four arrow consolidation pattern here actually drifted and became one, two, three, four, five, well, six and seven if you count the signals that didn't trip. I don't consider that a four arrow consolidation any longer. I would consider it a macro pullback signal. That would still be okay, but four arrow consolidation, you can't look at it as a four arrow consolidation anymore because the market is uh, obviously consolidating for a longer period than that. So it looks like that macro pullback signal had a little bit of follow through to it, as did the trend change signal here on the Eagle. or at least initial follow through. Oil prices took a little bit of a tumble there as well. Here's oil on the Eagle. So this turn turning out to be a rather large bear flag. Where the market's coming down, then you get this retrace, and then you get prices breaking out through the bottom. So crude oil somewhere around $41 a barrel for the May contract. Now we're starting to see a little bit of a reaction off of the, uh, the morning lows. really nothing going on here this morning folks like I said we had a couple good opportunities um, this macro pullback obviously would have hit our profit objective that one right there Uh, the hawk's starting to drift into yellow bars, which is suggestive of uh, either a sideways market or maybe even a, um, another move higher, another push higher. The hawk, uh, being the scalper, is going to be very sensitive to trend changes or attempts at trend changes.
Yeah, see you, uh, Suncom. I think you got the right idea. <laughs> Suncom says, it's kind of a quiet morning. I, I'm going to sign off. I think uh, we may see better opportunities this afternoon. Very often when the market is quiet like this in the morning, we see more going on in the afternoon session. So the hawk are already moving into green bars. Uh, we don't have a signal here just yet, but starting to look a little bit more bullish. The falcon changing the trend line over a little bit. Again, no signal, but things starting to perhaps get a slight more bullish flavor to them. Gold slowing somewhat and actually starting to head a little lower. Gold very conflicted this morning also. Here's April gold. Uh, they took a little bit of a run up here uh, when the NQ headed lower. But you can see same thing or a similar thing to what we're seeing on the NQ. And I'm sure is true for the rest of the stock markets where we're just getting this sideways drift going on. And even though it's very painful for us to trade, it actually means that the stock market is pretty content where it's at. It's pretty happy with the uh, with its current pricing around the 43, 96, 97 area. It's not finding much reason to to move. Spoke too soon. Okay, a little bit of a press higher. And now here comes the reset. Technically, this is a first micro macro cross now on the hawk. You could look to take it above the high. I would try to cover it as deep as I could. Honestly, though, it's not one of these signals that gives me a real warm fuzzy feeling. I'd be just as happy to see that get back into yellow bars and take away all temptation to try to buy it. So what I should be doing here with this first micro macro cross is adjusting the order like this on the way down. <clears throat> In fact, what I will do is I'll just throw a onesie on it. Just because the market's been so sideways this morning, I don't want to throw a whole lot of risk on this trade. Oh, well done, Jim. Jim uh, scalping a couple of 
ticks on the uh, mini uh, mini Dow. Looks like he picked up about 23 ticks. Not bad at all on a day like today. I think what concerns me the most is the degree of sideways trading that we have going on. You know, there's just a lot of sideways drift right here. Anytime you see a sideways market, I'm always thinking trading range. Right? I'm always thinking it's going to get stuck in this trading range. All right, first micro macro cross. Let's see if they're going to take a run here at the top end. So we've got a little bit of a bottom style. Ideally, the bottom is confirmed. Oops, the bottom is confirmed when we get this kind of situation going on. If prices fail at this point, and then go higher. Now, I better get my stop back in play. I inadvertently deleted it there. So the problem is that this leg that we're currently on may actually try to get way down here to retest the lows before we get the next possible move higher. There's no way to know. But once we do have this higher low, things become a little bit easier for us. And now the hawk drifting into yellow bars. Not exactly what I was hoping for, but there you go. So we'll just kind of nurse this one for a little bit. I guess there's no news going on today. I'm just checking the news listings. No, nothing going on today for news. And things looking a little quiet for tomorrow as well. Gee, I wonder if it's going to be one of these weeks where there's just nothing really going on. Crude inventories on Wednesday. Thursday, oh, well, no, that's nothing too serious. I was going to say there's an FOMC announcement, but that's just a, a regular one. And then, of course, the holiday, um, Good Friday. And then next Monday, things get back to normal. So it's possible this could be a tough, uh, tough trading week.
And you can see here now why I was so reluctant about this uh, first micro macro cross signal. First micro macro cross, yes. High probability signal, definitely. But you have to take the kind of the context of the market into consideration as well. So here they are. They've come all the way down. They've hit the um, uh, or are testing the lows. And if we do get a bullish bar here, I'm going to start following it bar for bar higher. And of course, if we get the failure here, well, then the market is, should unwind lower still. So still kind of in this first eagle trade. Oh, we did get a hard edge bounce here signal off of the Raptor. Honestly, though, I wouldn't have been too keen on that one either. Just because the logistics of it. Well, I suppose there was enough in there that we could profit before we get here to the bottom of our trading range. But as I mentioned before, the last thing I really want is to get stuck in a sideways market if I can help it. Don't like sideways markets. All right, so we're making some progress here. I'm going to start to trail my stops relatively tight. The point is, if the market reverses once again and heads lower from here, well, then I may as well take my stop out. Well, they're trying. Oh, all right, well, now that the uh, sellers 
are kind of coming back. It's obvious that we don't want to be on the buy side of that trade. But it really is starting to look to me like this market is just going to be drifting sideways. And it's almost near the top of the hour. We might close up shop a little bit early here this morning. Um, hopefully Tuesday will be a little bit more of a normal trading day. I'm using air quotes when I say that. All right, you guys, we'll catch up with you uh, tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, I get some comments here from you guys that you think it's stuck in the trading range. I, I think that's totally it as well. I think we're just going to see the market continue to drift sideways more or less. All right, catch you tomorrow. We'll talk to you then. Bye for now.